we're asking people to write short pieces for Brooklyn Writer as part of this um, collection of pieces. We're asking each person to think about an artist um, of any medium. You know, it could be a, um, it could be a musician, it could be a, um, a choreographer, it could be a filmmaker, a painter, you know, whomever. Thinking about the hop and its 50th birthday, we thought, well, let's use this period of time. So an artist within the last 50 years that has deeply influenced their work. Bill Frizzell, the great um, uh, guitarist. Nick Barsh, who is a Zurich-based uh, pianist. He has a group called Ronin. Uh, Greg Sonnier, who's like the, the drummer of my favorite band of all time, which is Deerhoof. Ethan Iverson of the Bad Plus, and uh, Padma Newsom, uh, a wonderful musician who is uh, a part of the National. The question out there was, who outside of the, the, the people that one would normally consider commissioning in the classical world, who outside of that picture would write something awesome for us? We love the music of all these people and, and um, in the sense of boundless exploration, which we try to do with a, a quartet, it feels like all of these people in their own lives are writing music that, that is beyond whatever label someone has slapped on them. I'm trying to challenge myself not to think in terms of this piece is old, this is part of the repertoire, you know, um, uh, and this piece is new, uh, nobody has heard it before. To me, actually, they, um, they exist on an equal plane. When I hear a quartet, um, late Beethoven quartet, Opus 131, I don't care how much we've rehearsed it, how much we've performed it, how, how many other recordings I've listened to of it in my lifetime. I mean, the thing s still sounds to me like, like a, a really startling and new and revolutionary piece of music. And I think it will forever be that way by, by design. On the other side of that coin, you know, we get a piece of music and, um, you know, a brand new piece of music. We read it through a couple of times and it feels it feels like the back of your hand. I think great new music, you know, has a way of doing that. It's not about, um, you know, the furious drive to create something new. I think it's the furious drive to be, you know, uh, an extension of a tradition. We very much view the music we play in the same sense of um, what what is going to change our lives. And so, since it has changed our lives, we want to share that with people. So um, whether that's new music or old music, uh, we want to participate in, in that. A string quartet is a very portable thing. It, you know, we just need our instruments, maybe some music stands. We, we can show up anywhere. So, um, and we want to go where people are and where they want to listen to music. So. Um, that happens in a variety of settings. That can happen in a club, it can happen in a Buddhist temple in Japan, it can happen um, you know, at Carnegie Hall, which is a great place to listen to music, it can happen at the hop. When we play a Beethoven quartet, that music has such a power to it to transform its surroundings that when we've played it, say, at a club in the Lower East Side, um, it actually, you can feel like the light in the room changes when that music starts. And for the people who are in the room, um, we feel like there's a sense of, wow, this is happening here? That's crazy. That's amazing. I think the power of music and why people should <laughs> see live music and seek it out, um, even if it means getting outside of their normal orbit, um, you know, is its power to actually take a really transformative journey.